wow, now that was a dramatic opening. But I think it's well worth it because on this episode, I'm going to take this plain piece of wood and we're going to turn it into a fully finished vignette for the Krupp's 21 centimeter artillery piece. I hope you stay with me through the entire episode all the way to the end. And please also hit that like and subscribe. A lot of work to do, so let's get started. So let's build a diorama base. I start out with a piece of MDF, it's six by nine inches. And onto that, I'm just gonna add a piece of blue foam. And the reason for the blue foam is because I just wanna have some leeway in order to carve into it so I can change the elevation and add some interest to the groundwork itself. The basic premise for this scene is gonna be this gun emplacement. And so to the front, I need to build up the earthworks. So I'm just using some chunks of foam, gluing them into place uh, with some PVA. And then this will all be cut back and, and shaped a little bit later. I'm not terribly worried about the exact shape at the moment. What is gonna start happening now is a lot of test fitting. Cause I want the gun to really settle into the groundscape here. So I'll set the model in place, make some markings, cut back on the blue foam and just really settle things in and get the elevation correct. And as you can see, I'm using all the latest tricks and most high-tech hardware to cut back this foam. Yeah, maybe not so high-tech. I think they just call this carving and whittling. I'll consider myself very fortunate if I can walk away from this with all my fingers still attached. And another round of test fitting. You can see the tail is starting to settle down into the scene a little bit, and that's what I'm looking to have happen. And of course, I'm bumping off pieces of the front wall while I'm trying to test fit to the back. So let's re-glue this piece back on. Start to give a little more attention to the front wall, just getting those blocks kind of lined up where I need them to be. And then of course, we'll do some more test fitting and we'll do some more test fitting and we'll do some more test fitting. I can't stress enough how important it is to actually integrate your model into, onto your scene or into your scene. I know from my own experience, there's really nothing more disheartening than to get right down to the finish line with your model and your diorama base and you're feeling great about things. And then you take one last look at it or you're taking your final photographs and you realize that your wheels are off the ground or your tracks aren't making contact with the surface. I don't like going back and fixing those types of errors, especially at the end. I want to concentrate on just the final touches and and really just bring it home. So spending a little extra time here in these early stages to get things dialed in, it really pays off in the long run and it will actually save you quite a bit of time. Okay, up till now, you've watched me carve, you've watched me whittle, you've watched me almost lose fingers, and you're probably really starting to question my methods and maybe even my sanity. Well, now I'm gonna really challenge you. As I mentioned earlier, I'm pretty old school on a lot of my modeling techniques and the materials I use. Heck, I've been doing this for, geez, 50 years or so. So for me, plaster of Paris is something I used when I was a child, when I started making models and bases. And it's something that I still very much think is a valid tool to be using on our current models. So here are some benefits. It's cheap. It's super easy to use. Every kindergartner knows how to do this. And as you can see right now, this is why I wasn't so much worried about the form and the fit of those blocks on the front wall, because now I'm actually be able to make the contours with the plaster of Paris strips of paper. The other benefit here is, is that once this dries, I have a rock hard solid surface to be able to apply all of my special effects to make my scene. This is Magic Sculpt. It's a two part putty the A and a B side that need to be combined together for it to harden. Epoxy Sculpt is another type of this same putty. It's very popular with all sorts of different artists, especially sculptors. I like making these thin sheets of the putty and then pressing them onto the surface. The putty itself is very pliable, very malleable. You can press into it, you can sculpt into it. And this really helps when you're trying to fit your models onto your scene so they look like they're integrated. So here I'm pressing the fencing into the wall there. And I know I'm probably starting to sound like a broken record, 
but this putty really allows you to get everything dialed in so it looks like it's part of the scene. So like right here, I'm backfilling behind the fence with the putty, so the groundwork is level and leaning up against the, the fence itself. I mentioned that the putty is pliable. One of the nice aspects of it is that by using water, you can smooth the surface out. It, it's really easy just to make it nice and smooth and workable and soften the edges. And now, as you can see, I'm using that putty to really integrate the gun within the surface onto the base here. Um, the stick is moistened with water, and I'm just pressing that putty all around the edges and underneath all the little nooks and crannies just to make sure everything looks like it's part of the scene and not just resting on top of the scene. And before I get much further, I want to be able to put the nicer, the decorative sides onto the space. So I've got some balsa wood here, and I'm just cutting it to length, and I'll glue these to the bottom of the base. And here again is why I like using a board, because I can glue onto the board and make everything nice and secure. Once I have the edges in place and trimmed down, then I can just add some putty along those edges just to get the gaps filled up. And then my next steps are going to be pretty messy. And so I want to protect this nice wood from getting a bunch of paint and things like that on it. So I just wrap everything with a little bit of painter's tape just to protect it. And later I'll paint it to a black color. Well, speaking of getting things dirty and starting to paint, here we go. One area where I might have moved into the 21st century is my use of these different types of diorama effects. This is AK Interactive's Terrains. It's an acrylic paste. And in this case, it's pre-shaded to a dark brown color. And it's got a little bit of a texture to it, a little bit of grit within the paste. And so once it dries, you've got a really nice foundation, uh, a pretty good base color to start off with, and a little added texture. And once I finish up with this dark earth, I'm going to come back with uh, what is light earth and just apply that over the top on almost a wet on wet application. And why am I doing this, you might ask? Well, it looks cool. Well, yeah, it does. But really what I'm doing here is I just want to add a little bit of definition to the space. So I've got a base color that's very, very dark and uniformed. And by adding these lighter areas, I'm starting to create the highlights and the shadows. This all will come together and start giving me a really nice foundation. So when I start refining the base, I have a good starting point. This is my blue bowl of good stuff. And every diorama modeler especially should have something like this in their cupboard. This is a collection of roots and twigs and sticks and dirt, things that I collect that I think will become useful as I work through dioramas. One piece I found was this little broken stick, and I think that's going to look great as a blown off tree trunk in the corner of the diorama. Again, I'm using Magic Sculpt just to blend it back in with the remainder of the base. Returning now to my blue bowl of really good stuff, the paste is dried and it's given me a really good foundation, especially color-wise. You can see how I've got some nice highlights and shadows. But what I'm missing is the real realistic texture. So that's where the blue bowl comes in. I've got some sand, rock, gravel, dirt, um, and a little jar over here to the side. And I'm just gonna sprinkle that over the glue. Because really, let's face it, what's better to replicate earth and dirt and natural environment than spreading around some earth, dirt, and natural environment. And this is just a start. I'll eventually work across this entire base adding the dirt and the gravel. Again, my blue bowl of good stuff, I find this dried up grass or weeds or something, I don't even know what it is, but it's going to work perfectly around the base of the tree trunk here to give it some context. And I also have these little dried roots, and I'll just put these on the embankment just to look like the earth has been cut away and exposed these roots. I'm pretty pleased with the way that the base is starting to, to come together right now. We've got some really good texture, we've got a nice form, things are starting to fit, but what's not quite correct is that the colors of the base are not really the same colors that I used when I finished and weathered the gun. So I need to work on that now. I'll use these washes of acrylic color. They're very nice and thin, and so they're really translucent. 
they'll just flow over to the surface and ever so subtly change the tones within the mud to match those that I used on the gun. Really, when it comes right down to it, painting your model base is really no different than painting your model. And so now, as we're coming down towards the end of this, it's really about adding those final details, those little bright sparkles that will give it interest and capture your viewer's attention. One of the more enjoyable and easier things you can do is just picking out all those little rocks and stones that we've worked so hard to put into the texture. Just add a little bit of highlight to those. So it's probably a pretty good time to take a look at where the diorama sits at the moment. Actually, I'm pretty pleased with it. It's a little exaggerated on the highlights, but I think working with some pigments, I'll be able to blend that back and tie it in with the gun just perfectly. So overall, yeah, I'm pretty pleased. Um, let's keep moving forward with this. Okay, I think it's about time we start tying it all together. So I've added the fencing into the scene, and now I'm just using the Magic Sculpt to integrate it fully. Um, same process as before, just sticking it in and sculpting it around the parts so that it all looks integrated within the scene. Little magic trick here, I use some crumpled up tin foil just to give it some texture. And then what seems like a deja vu, I'm right back at the beginning. I'm adding some of the terrain's texture, the same color, the dark earth, to repaint the scene, cover up all that exposed uh, magic sculpt. And then I'll just continue to weather it back up using the pigments and the paints as I did with the rest of the scene, getting everything to match again. As I'm getting close to the end, it's really just about refining all those little small details. Here I'm just trying to accentuate, pick out those little roots that I added earlier on, just to make sure that they're noticeable. And I know I've mentioned using oils before during this project, but I haven't really shown it. But this is an example of how I use the oils. So I've got this dark charcoal color, and I'm just placing kind of these washes basically um, around the rocks and bottom of the fence line. Um, this color really helps accentuate the shadows. And I'll use other colors as well if I want to, say, bring up the highlights. I'll use the lighter dust colors or the sepia colors perhaps for some of the more just middle tone areas. But I think one of the strongest benefits of using oils is that it really brings out the texture. So if, like I did early on, I spend a lot of time adding texture to the base, well these oils, these oil washes, they do a great job of running into the recesses um, still allowing the highlights to show through, and it really makes everything pop. So finally, I feel like I'm at a place where the groundwork is, is good. I'm, I'm ready to, to basically button this one up. So the gun goes back into place. We'd already test fitted it a number of times throughout, but there's still just the final little bit that needs to be done. So once again, I go back to the Magic Sculpt, and I just tuck the gun nice and securely onto the, onto the base with it. I'll go back after this and we'll do the same sort of weathering we've done all the way through, adding the textures, adding the paints, adding the pigments, and just make sure everything looks seamless across the entire base. And what is absolutely perfect timing, on the final day that I'm starting to work on this base and getting it all finished up and making this video. Um, an order came in from Model Seller. I had ordered these little 21 centimeter shells and they arrived today. So I'm going to get these painted up and figure out where to put them on the base. And so with that, I think we're about done with all the construction here. I'm going to pull off that tape. I'm going to paint the sides black and make it look nice and pretty. And so I'm going to finish things up here. And so while I'm doing that, I would really appreciate it if you would hit that like and subscribe button. And so just give me a few seconds here. And through the magic of video, here are the final photographs. As always, I really hope you got something out of this video. 
um, just little tips or tricks or something that you can use on your own models. You know, quite frankly, this was actually a pretty involved um, diorama. But in the end, I think it came together pretty well. And I really hope you enjoyed watching the process. And so with that, I think we're going to call this one a wrap. I'm going to roll some credits here at the very end where you can find me in some other areas on social media. And once again, please hit that like and subscribe. Talk to you soon and keep modeling.